Hi, I'm Rich Fink from the Western Loudoun Art and Studio Tour, and today I have the pleasure of interviewing Jeff Miller, a wonderful photographer. Um, and good morning, Jeff. How are you doing today? Very well, thanks. Well, that's that's great. So why don't we get started, and you can just tell me a little bit about your artistic journey. Well, um, my artistic journey started a long time ago. I was a Fairfax County police officer. Oh. And so I worked in patrol for eight years, and I got my first camera, a Canon AE-1, when I'd only been on the department like a year or so. And so I was using that camera to take photographs of car accidents and crime scenes, suspects, that kind of stuff. Uh -huh. But then when I started to have children, naturally I was using my photographic skills that I was using on the street. I was using those to take pictures of my kids. Sure. Well, then after about eight years working in patrol, um, I had a passion for forensic science. And I applied to move from patrol into the crime scene section of the police department. Okay. And so for the rest of my career, for the rest of the 19 years I was on the police department and a total of 27 years with the police department, I was a crime scene detective. And so my background is forensic science. And so when I was in the crime scene section of the police department, we had all kinds of different cameras. We had a black and white dark room and a color dark room. And this was in the time of chemical processing Right. way before we started to have digital. So I learned a lot about photography through trial and error. Um, back then, the police department would allow us to take just about any kind of photograph outside of work that we wanted to, and then we could bring it into the office and work on it, making a print. And so I learned all about black and white darkroom processing um, there. And then we had a color darkroom also, and so I learned all about color darkroom processing, doing that sort of thing there too. Now, my photography skills were based on documentary type photography, taking uh -huh. pictures of crime scenes, taking pictures of fingerprints and footwear impression and blood spatter and that sort of stuff. Um, but my, my techniques, I would recognize, hey, I can use this technique to take a picture at Christmas time. Right. I can use this technique to take a picture of my kids. So, and then the department would send me away to different photography schools, and we had all kinds of different cameras to work with. I had a regular 35 millimeter camera, I had a two and a quarter camera, I had a an old graphics uh, three by five, or excuse me, four by five camera using sheet film, <clears throat> and so I got to, you know, like I said, learn all about photography. Um, more or less by trial and error. It sounds like uh, you, uh, because because of your uh, background, you've had a real depth of uh, of photography. Yeah, I would I would see I would see other photographers, you know, artistic photographers work, and I would see what they did, and I'm thinking to myself, all right, how did they achieve that photograph? Hmm. I would kind of sit down and using my forensic skills. I would analyze the photograph and figure out okay, what, how did they do that? How did they get that, that, that effect? And then, you know, I would talk it over with some of the other guys in the office, and they go, "Oh yeah, this is painting with light. You know, you have to have a number of different flashes go off and all this kind of stuff." I go, "All right," and then I would figure this out, and then I would go out and go see if I can reproduce that that kind of photograph. And so right. over time, I was able to do that. And then once I retired from the police department. I got more interested in landscape photography. Um, and so, you know, after that, you know, I was, had my own equipment then, and that was a significant expense once I left the police department. I had to buy my own camera equipment. I had to buy my own printer. Oh, my God, it was just, it was, the, the expense was unbelievable. And, and this is when I, we went to, uh, to digital photography. So I could get the same uh effects and much more different kinds of photography sitting at my computer with a couple of mouse clicks where before you know i would have to be sitting in the in the dark room churning out mistake after mistake throw yes. it in the trash until i got exactly what i wanted yes yeah it is uh it is a great time to be a artistic photographer because of the 
all of the features that uh, that you have at your disposal at, at the computer. It's just it's just great. Yeah, it's uh you can you can make all your mistakes digitally. You can see it on the screen and say to yourself, well, that's not what I'm looking for. Right. And then when the moment of truth comes, you decide, okay, I don't really want to print this one. Mm -hmm. And so you go, all right, you know, this is uh, four dollars worth of paper. I hope this comes out. Mm -hmm. And it usually does. I mean, every once in a while, you know, again, you got issues, printing issues, or see that color's not exactly the way it looked on the screen. Um, but you know, it's you can do much more on the screen and make your changes there rather than churning out pieces of paper that wind up going into the trash. I, I assume that you're also an expert in uh, Photoshop. Uh, well, I don't know about an expert, but but I have gotten really good over the years. And I can, I can in my head, I can come up with an idea. Hey, I want this to look a particular way. And then I'll try and figure it out. And if I can't figure it out, well, then you go on the internet and in you know, five or 10 minutes, you can find somebody who made a video showing you exactly what it is you're trying to do. They go, oh, that's how to do that. And then I file that away. As a matter of fact, I got a spiral notebook in my, my uh, studio where I keep all these techniques that I know I'm going to use later so I don't have to go back and search them up again. Mm, that's smart. So let, let me ask you a, a question. On, uh, on your artistic uh, photography, what, um, what inspires you? Uh, I really enjoy going to places. I do a lot of traveling. And uh -huh. unfortunately, this year, uh, I missed a trip to uh, the Isle of Skye in Scotland. And I was supposed to spend a week there and a week in London. And so um, I go to certain locations with very specific photographs that I have in mind that I want to take. Oh. Now, you know. Like any tourist, you know, like you go to London, you get to go take a picture of Big Ben. Okay, that's that sounds great and everything. That's kind of neat. And everybody's got that picture. But I go there and I go, okay, I want to get a picture of Big Ben, but there is a uh, there's a walkway underneath Westminster Bridge that has an arch. And if you stand in that archway at night, you can look across the river, and on one side is Westminster Bridge, and then you can have the lighted Big Ben in the background. Uh -huh. And that's the, the picture I would want. So I would plan it out. And I would go there at a very specific time to get a very specific kind of photograph. And so it's the planning and then to actually be at the location and have it all turn out exactly the way you envision in your head how this photograph is going to look. You just have to get there. And so I enjoy doing that. I enjoy the planning. And it's like mission accomplished. Hey, I got here. I got here at the time. I got the right kind of weather. And I got this photograph, and it turned out just the way I could see it in my head. That's great. That's great. Yeah, you're uh, you're you're still at the uh, at the beckoning of weather, though, right? You know, so that yes, yes, so, that's true. Uh, yeah. But every once in a while, the weather works to your advantage. Yes, yes. So uh, two years ago, my daughter and I we were on a trip in um, in France and Italy. And I went, and she and I went to this little town called Monarola, and it's a, uh, it's a uh, like a cliffside village on the banks of the Mediterranean Sea. Okay. And we were staying in this really nice uh, bed and breakfast kind of a place. And that night there was a huge storm, and the waves were crashing. And I thought, oh man, tomorrow morning, this is going to be fantastic. Mm -hmm. And so sure enough, I got up real early in the morning went around to the other side of the town so that I could shoot this photograph across the, the water with the town in the background, and it turned out great. And so every once in a while, you know, if the weather is a particular way, you gotta go, all right, let's take advantage of this. Where's gonna be the best place to, to use this clouds, use this rain, whatever, use that in your, in your, in your photograph to, to the best advantage. Yeah, it's... Uh... It's kind of like Bob Ross's expression, happy accidents. Yes, exactly. Yes. Okay, I do have a question because you have been you've been doing uh, photography for a long, long time. So during uh, this period, which you know, as you said, be began with your uh, career in the in the police, how have um, 
how has your technique changed? I mean, you did, we've already discussed that your technique changed because uh, technology changed. You know, you went from standard, uh, standard ways of, of getting the pictures and printing and that type of thing to digital. But I'm sure uh, with, uh, with your insight that things have changed a little bit over time in your technique. Yes, um, when you were using film back in the day, you, know, you had to think about the photograph and, and you could only take one or two images and hope for the best. And then you wouldn't know whether it came out until you went back to the lab, processed the film, look at the film, and then you know that 35 millimeter image is you know, it's, it's only this big. And so you can't really tell whether or not you know it came out just the way you wanted to. So then you have to make the enlargement. And so then you have to go through that whole process. Okay, now I can cut, crank off a dozen photographs, sure. you know, very quickly, and immediately look at them on the back of the camera and get a very general idea. I can even zoom in. I got a new uh, Nikon Z7 camera. It allows me to zoom in on the image and determine whether or not it's in focus. I got it just right. You know, is everybody's eyes open? You know, whatever. And I could do that immediately. Um, and so that's that's very helpful. Likewise, when you take that digital image back home and you load it on the computer, you know, now you have so many different tools, not just Photoshop, but things that'll get rid of the noise. You get things that can alter the color. You could do all kinds of stuff digitally that you could just never ever do back in the day when you had film and paper. I, I notice, uh, and I, I've seen your work. Uh, I've seen your work before on the uh, on the tour, and I noticed uh, behind you um, uh, the the work that you have there. And you're a real um, aficionado of, of black and white, uh, black and white are, are artistic, uh, right? Artistic so why did you why are you drawn so much to to uh black and white um i don't know i've always been asked that and i've heard other people get asked that question too and you know, i'm not i'm not a poet so i can't put it into you know very poetic kind of um discourse that's shakespearean prose here but mm -hmm. i just find that some images well photography is about capturing the light it's not capturing color i mean sometimes the light it has color in it but you're capturing the light and sometimes the image or at least the ones that i are drawn to the most are images that are very dramatic and sometimes they're more dramatic when you take away all the color i would like to bring in the three the three images i, I picked out of uh, out of your artwork and we can discuss them uh, as well is, is that okay with you sure Okay, and here we are. And so, um, Jeff, why don't we start with the uh, the first um, picture of a rather interesting, interesting tree and a very, very interesting sky. My son and I, we drove out there, and we were hiking up on top of this mountain. It's called Mount Lincoln. And so we were hiking up there, and you're way up above the tree line, so there's hardly any trees at this point uh, above on the mountain. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, we come down this hill, and we find these, these trees. And there was this one particular bristlecone pine tree, and you can see it's got some damage on it. I was going to take some photographs on a tripod as I was setting up the camera. In the valley on the other side of the mountain, as you can see there, there's a thunderstorm brewing. Well, my son and I were standing there. We're the tallest things on top of this mountain. And I'm standing there with a camera and a metal tripod. My son's <laughs> looking at me and I'm looking at him and I go, well, we got to be quick. Let's take these photographs and let's get the heck out of here before we get hit by a bolt of light. Right, right. So I mounted the camera on a tripod and it was my intention to take a number of photographs. And I, again, like I was talking about before, I wanted to do this particular photograph using a technique called HDR, High Dynamic Range Photography. And the way that works is you take about three to five images, all exactly the same, the camera mounted on a tripod. 
you use the same f-stop, but you use different shutter speeds. And then oh. when you take those five photographs, you go back and you put them all together on a computer. You put all five of them, one on top of the other, in register with each other. And then there's a computer program that the program then selects the best um, exposed pixels in each one of those five photographs. And then it makes one photograph that is properly exposed perfectly so that you get uniform uh, dynamic range throughout the entire photograph. It's very, very dramatic. It really is. It, it really is, Jeff. Uh, it's, a, it's a great picture. And, and thanks for... Thanks for ex explaining your uh, your technique on this. Uh, I'd like to move to the the next uh, uh, picture, sure. uh, the one that you were talking about. That this was actually taken in daylight, which is in itself amazing. When um, to me, when I first saw this, I I was like, this is like film noir here, if you know what I mean. Well, that was and, that was that was the effect I was looking for. Uh, you got it. This, this photograph was taken in a village in France, uh, in Normandy, France. I took the photograph in the daytime, and then when I got home, I started thinking about, okay, well, what would this look like at night if it were a black and white old style image? So I go, all right, well, you, know, you got to get rid of the sky, you got to get rid of all the contrast, you got to underexpose it a lot, and then I start thinking, okay, what's it going to look like with the lamps on? Where is the light gonna fall on the buildings? And so once I started like working the math out in my head and then using Photoshop and Lightroom and other techniques to brighten this up and, and basically add light to it, the way that the image is designed is, is that it makes your eye follow all the way to the back of the image. And it makes you look around to see what else is there that you might be missing. Well, you know, if, yes, and, and it does draw you along there. And it also get, has that, uh, that creepy feel that, that you were. <laughs> that's me. That's me all over. I'm, <laughs> in my background, I've seen a lot of creepy things. I bet you so have. This is kind of the, the, the thing I was trying to achieve. Yeah, well, you did achieve it here. I mean, if this wasn't France and it was uh, uh, jolly old England, you'd be looking behind you for Jack the Ripper, I guess. Exactly. Yes, it's great. It's great. All right, let's move to the uh, to the uh, third one, Jeff. Uh, I really love it. I love the driftwood, which is uh, really draws you to it as well. Yeah, this this is a picture I took last year. My daughter lives in the Outer Banks of North Carolina, and there was a hurricane coming about 24 hours later. So I was only going to be there like another. 24 to 48 hours, and then I was going to have to leave because they were going to evacuate non-residents. Mm -hmm. So the clouds were building out in the ocean. Um, I happened to be walking on the beach, and I noticed this big piece of of, of tree that was um, just there on the beach, and the waves were were running up against it. And so I positioned myself on the other side. I waited for the waves to come up and and hit the the driftwood, and I got a nice um, wave action underneath it and then when I got home I worked on developing the contrast in the clouds and just the inside story those beams of light that are coming out of the clouds okay well that's photoshop I did that that wasn't natural but I thought it added to it okay um I'm I'm gonna uh take us back to where it's just the uh just the two of us so um, here And here we are. Okay. Okay. All right. I do have a, a one more question for you because I, I do think that there are plenty of art lovers out there that would like to see much more of uh, of your collection. So, can you give me uh, your your social media contacts where they could see more of your of your collections of of your artwork and also uh, perhaps be able to to buy uh, online of your of, of your work. Uh, I don't have um, like a, my own web page or anything like that. I did that for a while, but it it just really wasn't very rewarding. I wasn't getting a lot of traction. But I do have a lot of my images on a photography social media web um, page called Viewbug, 
And so I post regularly on that that website. And if anybody sees any of those images and they really want those, they can contact me through my regular email account, which is jeffmiller2 at yahoo.com. And then we can communicate that way. I can certainly uh, print the photograph up and make it in whatever size somebody wants. Okay, great. That's great. Well, uh, Jeff, it's been, it's been a real pleasure uh, chatting with you today. And um, I, I hope you continue to make many more of these really incredibly interesting and uh, exciting in many ways. Scary a little bit, but, but that's, that's great too. So it's been great talking to you, uh, like I said, um, uh, Jeff, and you have a wonderful day. You too. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Enjoy okay. it. All right. Take care.